Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a good weekend. It's Jeff Gibby here. I'm going to go ahead and get, kick things off this morning. Uh, welcome. Uh, glad you guys could make it. Uh, it. Seems like Saturday morning works. Have some mixed feelings about that. But beyond the discussion for today, let's go ahead and talk a little bit. I know your favorite part is this part. Let's go ahead and read it. Today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company's software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Uh, Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. I uh, know you loved it. Thanks. Uh, in, in, in any case, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Greg. Uh, Greg, I consider a pretty good friend of mine. Um, it, when we were when I was in California uh, for a few years, uh, Greg and I worked pretty extensively on an add-on that he's going to be talking a lot about today. Uh, his scoring method, I'm very proud of. Uh, uh, the the fact that he looks at candlestick patterns and like seven million bars of, of statistics and that kind of stuff. There's just a lot of research that goes into what Greg does. Uh, Greg right now is um, retired, I think is the best way to put it. Um, but uh, up until, I think it was uh, two years ago, he was managing a huge hedge fund uh, or uh, for stadium money management. And, and, and Greg, feel free to correct anything that I misstate, if you would. Okay. <laughs> In any case, um, Greg's a great guy. Uh, uh, a few things about him is he loves a good In-N-Out burger. <laughs> Greg, I think I'm running out of good things to talk about for you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the screen over to you. And um, so you should get a share my screen option. Perfect. How's that? That's great. Great. All right. I'm going to I'm gonna shut up. Your turn. All right. Showtime. Uh Thank you to everyone that's attending. I haven't done this in quite a while, but uh, I, Jeff said I was retired. I'm, uh, I guess I'm semi-retired. I don't think I'll ever retire, but I want to give a little history on this. Uh, in 1988, I attended a Market Technicians Association meeting at the Camelback Inn in Phoenix, and uh, there was a large contingent of Japanese traders there. And they had, they presented Hayashi, which is we interpreted as candlesticks. It, show, it showed their charting technique with the wicks and the bodies and all that. And uh, I was I was just kind of dazzled by it. I'd never heard of it or seen it before. Um, and I was working with Norm North at N Squared Computing, and we decided that we would write a software program to automatically identify the Japanese candle patterns. Uh, little did we know how much effort that would take, but we did it. And uh, I think Steve Nissen at the time, I think, I don't know if Steve was there or not, but I th he went away and wrote the first book on candlesticks and really popularized it in the, in the U.S. Um, one of the things I'm going to talk about throughout this presentation is the, the process of how to identify a candle pattern. Because the Japanese literature, I spent time in the Yokohama with a trader friend of mine, and we there's about seven or eight books on candlesticks and candle patterns in ja in Japanese, and we interp he interpreted them for me, and we went through and discussed all the major patterns. Um, but there were just pictures there, uh, hand drawings, and there was no precision. So when you, when you're putting code into a computer you have to make some some uh, fairly significant assumptions about things and so we're going to talk about that as we go through this uh, there's the demonstration I put this bio on here almost as a joke uh, if somebody reads it they might think that I was, could never hold a job um, candlestick charting explained was a book that when candle power software came out in 19 89, 1990, it was DOS-based, a, a publisher called me and said, your software seems to be very uh, popular, 
you should consider writing a book on the subject. And I said, well, I don't really have time. And he said, it would probably help sell a lot of software. I said, well, let's talk. So signed a contract, and uh, it was Probus. And so I, I wrote a book. It was called Candle Power, the original book. Probus was acquired by uh, Irwin in 95. Irwin put the book out with a new cover on it and changed it to Candlestick Charting Explained. And then McGraw-Hill took over, and I don't remember when McGraw-Hill took over, some, somewhere in the 90s. And they coerced me into writing a third edition about 2005 or six. And so the third edition, uh, considerably larger book. It's uh, I don't remember how many pages it is, but it weighs a couple of pounds. Uh, I was an engineer. I was an aerospace engineer, so I did an enormous amount of research into the statistics and the probabilities of candle patterns. And then uh, I wrote a workbook that goes along with it. The workbook, uh, the typical workbook structure where you there's a little lesson and then you ask questions with multiple choice answers so people can test themselves and then the back of the book goes into even more detail on Japanese candle pattern recognition JCPR which is the Metastock add-on which is what we're going to talk about today so Japanese candle pattern recognition one of the components of recognition is what I call reduction or, re, or where you reduce the, a pattern, a pattern consists of multiple days where you reduce it down to a single candlestick. For instance, here is a bearish reversal pattern, an, an evening star pattern. It's three, three candlesticks. And if you reduce that, for instance, if you use this low, this high, use this open, and this close, you would reduce it down to this, and, and that would be a shooting star pattern, which is also considered a bearish pattern. And so this is favorable when the reduction of a pattern to a single candle line also is the same as the, the major pattern. In other words, both of them should be bearish, and that's, very, that's a very positive sign. There are a number of times when the candle pattern could be bearish, but when you reduce it to a single line, it reduces to a bullish line. And I, I consider that not as good of a pattern. Uh, a number of pattern breakdowns are not supportive. This, this, this is all built in automatically into the JCPR scoring system. So JCPR is not just candlestick charting and candle pattern identification. There's an enormous amount of uh, code. I remember William Golson and, and Lynn DeFrenny, the guys at Metastock, we spent a crazy amount of time uh, refining and defining a process for helping to say, is this a good pattern or not? And will it, does it have a better chance of working? And so that's what we're going to go through today. Uh, the scoring system uses statistics also. When I did the original book, it was fairly difficult. I had to do it on futures a lot because opening price was not readily available in Japanese candle. It was not readily available in the U.S. for stocks. In fact, it wasn't until 91 that opening price became routinely available, and you cannot use the previous day's close, as some people think, because gaps are very important. The Japanese think that the time period between the close of one day and the open of the next is very, very important. Uh, and that's why I don't use candlesticks for anything other than daily data. Uh, if you used them for intraday data, then the next, the say you used a 15-minute candlestick, then the close of one candlestick, the open would be the next tick. Not exactly a lot of time to make a decision. Also, with the opening price being more readily available when I did the third edition in 2005, I took all the common stocks out of the NASDAQ, the New York, and the Amex. There were 7,275 common stocks, and it accounted to 14.6 million days of data. 
and that's what I ran the statistics on. I didn't use uh, closed-in funds or, or e well, the ETFs didn't exist back then, uh, just common stocks. And so developed this series of statistical data, and this is what it looks like in the book, and this is somewhat what shows up in Japanese, JCPR. I'll just call it JCPR for this. So there's the pattern name with a two or three letter uh, code to identify it, MTL for matching low. And then the plus sign always means it's a bullish pattern. If it was, if it was a bearish pattern, it would be a minus sign. And then over here it says R plus, that means it's a reversal pattern versus a continuation pattern. Reversal patterns are what you're looking for that, sh that shows a change in trend. Then trend required. Now, <clears throat> this, is, this is an issue that I speak about a great deal. If you look at a candle pattern in isolation, you're, you're just playing a game with yourself. A candle pattern, if you have a like that bearish evening star we had at the beginning, that pattern can only occur in an uptrend. Because if you're talking about a reversal pattern, you have to say, well, what is it reversing? Well, it's reversing the trend that it's in. So if it isn't in an uptrend, how could you have a bearish reversal pattern? So trend required is necessity. And we've got a, I've got a really nifty feature in JCPR that helps identify the trend. Confirmation. This is based on uh, lots of statistics and data and kind of a subjective thing on my part. Um, it's a good, for instance, this matching low pattern here is good enough that I, I say you don't need confirmation. Confirmation really just means you wait for the next day to see if the day moves in the direction the pattern was saying. This was kind of a, uh, may be confusing, but when you have 14 million days of data, I wanted to see the frequency of days between the pattern on average. And so this matching low, out of 14 million days of data, there was a matching low on average every 590 days. Now that doesn't sound like a very frequent, but we're looking at 7,200 different stocks. So it, it it's, uh, could be misleading. And then the, the real meat here is I believe that candlesticks have some value on a short-term basis only. Uh, when I wrote the first book, I said in the first 10 days, but by the time I got around to the third edition and doing JCPR, I thought seven days was probably maximum. And so when a pattern occurs, you can see this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here, that's days since the pattern happened. In other words, one day after the pattern, two days after the pattern, three days, and so on. And then if the, if the price, the closing price was above the close of the pattern, it was considered a winner. And this shows the percentage of winners of those 7,275 stocks on the first day. And then the second day, only 64%, third, 62, and so on. And as you would expect, because candle patterns are short term, they're, they're going to be better initially and it's going to fade off over time. Similarly, the losers, which is just the complement of that, they're going to be worse at the beginning and get better over time. One is just the complement of the other. And then the average percent gain uh, of all these stocks, the average percent gain, and you can see that even, even though some, as the number of winners went down, the ones that stayed in, the percent gain got better. The same way with the losers, the percent loss got better. And then net profit to net loss is also a very important thing. It's a ratio. So you, what you want to do is find good numbers all the way across here that are high, and you'll compare these to other candle patterns, and then you'd want to see uh, the percent winners to not be deterred. In other words, you wouldn't want to see 69 and then 64 and then drop down 30, 30, 29. You wouldn't want to see that. So that's how you interpret that. So oh, here, I'm already ahead of the slide, sorry. So good candle pack will have a positive net profit per loss and then smaller average losses per candlesticks. These are automatically done in JCPR. All of this stuff is done automatically. You don't have uh, to do anything. The next thing to do with candle patterns is, and I have to tell a little story here. Uh, 
I only look at horizontal support and resistance lines. I, 45 years ago when I started out in technical analysis, I drew lines all over charts. But I found out that I didn't, couldn't trade from them. It's really nice. When you start trading with real money, you start finding out really quick what's important and what isn't. Uh, the reason horizontal trend lines work better is because those are price-based support and resistance lines. And those, there's a behavioral heuristic called anchoring. If you look, Google that and look it up, you'll see that anchoring is very important. And this is one of the reasons technical analysis works, uh, because people remember prices. So um, I have automatic, in JCPR, there are automatic support and resistance lines drawn. And that usually there's four support lines and four resistance lines, but it kind of depends on how the data is moving to show, to show that. And they're based upon the highs and lows of the candlesticks in the short-term basis. So what you want to do is what you, you want to find a bullish reversal pattern, which has to be in a downtrend, reaching a support line. And the closer it is to the support line, the more credit it gets. Likewise, a bearish reversal pattern, you'd want to see it up against a line of resistance. Filtering. Let's talk about stochastics. I think everybody knows what stochastics is. It was created by Ralph Dystant, and most people think it was George Lane, but George Lane just promoted it and, and really did a wonderful job of promoting it, but he did not create it. Uh, if you use 80 and 20 as your thresholds, if, uh, if you've got a chart and you have stochastics. I use percent D, which is the three period moving average of percent K. In other words, it smooths out some of the bumps. When it goes above 80, uh, and you're in an uptrend, it's going to stay above 80 for quite a while, as long as the as long as the stock is in an uptrend. Because that 80 above 80 means that that price that day is over 80% of the high low range in the last 14 days. So it's at the top of the range. You will, you will, candle patterns, then if, a, if stochastics is above 80 and a bearish reversal candle pattern occurs while stochastics is above 80, you've got an early warning signal that the, that the market may be going down before stochastics will tell you because stochastics is just going to follow the market. It's not going to be predictive. And so this is called filtering. In other words, when stochastics is above 80, I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns. When it's below 20, I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns. And again, all this is automatic in JCPR. So what's included in the add-on? There's candle trend, and we're going to talk about that later. That's a trend following method that I created. Um, it's volatility based, or you could call it adaptive trend. Um, when I did the research for the book, all three editions, I didn't have this tool. Uh, I used a 10 period exponential average. You want a short term, you want something to show trends on a short term basis. And I just chose a 10 period exponential average. I tried different other things, but the 10 period exponential average turned out to be the best. Uh, and so I created this candle trend, which is built into JCPR. Uh, if you have JCPR installed, of course. And what's nice about it, uh, the Metastock guys, we agreed that it, you can use it with anything else. If you have JCPR installed on your computer, this trend indicator is in your indicator file, and you can use it even if you're not using JCPR. The support and resistance that I just showed you is also in there that way. You can use it outside of JCPR if you have JCPR installed. And then the filtering binary is also in there, which we just talked about. Uh, the explorations that are included, there's uh, one that identifies reversal patterns. And then a little more refined one called reversal patterns confirmed. That means the reversal pattern has identif been identified, but the next day the price has moved in the direction that the reversal pattern said it would. So you've got to, it's kind of like a little confirmation. And then the filtered patterns means, the, for instance, the bearish reversal patterns, stochastics was above 80. 
the bullish ones it was below 20 and then there's the confirmed version also so some great uh, explorations to help you whittle down the uh, number of stocks you look at uh, the advisor is the candle Japanese candle pattern recognition advisor and it shows you all of this data and we're going to go through that here in just a minute a couple of templates I, I clean charts and then one showing all the filtering indicators that we just we just covered but I don't like a lot of stuff on the chart I like to keep it at a minimum I know uh, I used to have people send me charts that were just absolutely covered with indicators and trend lines and Fibonacci this and circles and I said you're not you're just playing with your software you're not doing an analysis so using indicators with JCPR <clears throat> this is the candle trend it's good for short-term trends um, and I, like I said, I get ahead of the slides here. You can use it with other analysis, and it's a true range ad adaption to how the prices is moving. For example, if prices are tightening up, then JCP the candle trend tightens up. But if, if there's a little volatility in there, the, in other words, the average true range is expanding, then candle trend will open up. So because you, you don't want it to reverse until you really have a significant reversal. Here's an example of it, um, and you do have. There is a setting there. I, I don't know what. I can't remember what the default is in JCPR, but you have the ability to change it. The number of days for look back, you can make it a little faster, or a little slower. Oh, here, here I am ahead of the slide. Sorry. So it, JCPR support and resist automatic draw support and resistance lines, and these these are adjusted to 126 the last half year. There's 252 days on average in a year. So we look at the last half year for the support and resistance lines. You don't want to get too far away because candle patterns are very short term. And here's an example of JCPR support and resistance. You can see the support lines here and the resistance lines here. And then you can see the candle trend also there. Filtering binary is really not just simply stochastics, it's three indicators. The primary one is the nine day stochastic percent day, and then there's a 14 day stochastic percent day, kind of a confirmation, and then Wilder's directional movement, plus and minus DI. And these are each given points. The nine day is given 20 points, the 14 day is given 10, directional movement is given 10, so the filtering binary ranges between plus 40 and minus 40 and you can't think of that when you see it plotted you can't think of that like stochastics where you're looking for overbought or oversold plus 40 means you're looking for good bullish patterns minus 40 means you're looking for good bearish reversal patterns kind of the opposite of stochastics in RSI and there we see it so here's here's an example of the filtering binary here it is up at 40 here we've got an engulfing pattern here showing up this bearish means that the candle trend is bearish coming down here we didn't plot it on this but you can see the engulfing pattern so that would be a very favorable we're in a bearish trend so we're having a positive engulfing pattern and the filtering binary is a positive 40 so this has a good chance of being successful and then we, we talk about volume too but we'll, we'll get to that here in a minute so here is the expert up here is the filtering binary this ribbon reflects this green line here which is the candle trend whether it's positive or bullish here are the support and resistance lines here are the automatic identified patterns piercing line uh, separating lines uh, engulfing pattern now you you kind of you might want to in the in the manual that comes with it there's a little page you you probably put, take it to a copy machine and cut it out so you can learn the that's a Tsuki get learn the what these codes mean over here is the the results of this and we're going to go through this now I think so here we go okay support and resistance very important in fact in in this in the way everything support and resistance accounts for 25% of the of the scoring and so if we if we've got a bullish pattern then we want to see it where it is from support and here the, this is the closest to support the, the four lines that are the closest to the pattern only 0.86% away from the close so that that's 
that's pretty good. It says a homing pigeon right here was completed on this date, and this is where it is based upon the thing. And this shows you the trend is bearish and tells you where the current close of Apple is. See, I'm getting ahead. Sorry. And this kind of this blows it up, showing the maximum possible. So support and resistance. The this on this particular one, because it wasn't right at it, it was close. It only gets 25 points, which is the maximum that you can get. If it was, let's say, if it was 1.3, and I've got it's all in the manual on how far away these have to be. But let's say it was 1.3 percent away, it might only get 15 points, but the maximum is 25. So the pat so here here's the filtering gets 40 points because it was up here at 40 maximum of 40 uh, volume and I don't know why this isn't covered earlier but I do look at the volume it doesn't carry a lot of weight it only carries uh, 15 points total but I look at the last three days of volume and I say that the volume of the last day has to be greater than the 15 day average of volume. I say that the volume increases on each day of the pattern. That's a good pattern when the volume increases each day. And then the volume on the close is greater than the volume of the other, path, other days of the pattern. In other words, and that carries 15 points max, but five points for each of those three things that I mentioned. And then the statistics right here, 12 and 15, that big table I showed at the beginning with all the statistics, if the statistics are really good, it gets 15 points. And then in the manual, I break down how the scoring is. So for this pattern, it only got 12 points because while the statistics were good, they weren't as great as some of them. And then the breakdown we talked about at the very beginning, if it breaks down into the same bullish or bearish configuration, then it gets five points. Not much. This one didn't get any. That's a lot of information on one slide, sorry. Uh, and then there you can click on this and it'll give you a definition of a homing pigeon and a picture of it. And, and this is what it is. So I guess we're going to go through some more of this here. This shows you the identifying the patterns. All these little signals with plus means it's bullish, minus means it's negative. So we get we identify only reversal patterns. Uh, we had talked about doing confirmation pattern. Nothing wrong with confirmation patterns. If you if a market's in a trend and you miss getting in at the early stages of the trend and you see a com, a continuation, but not a con, you see a continuation pattern. You know it's something you can act on. But uh, we figured the rever reversal patterns are what, are what you're really trading on. So this is this is the uh, I'll, I'm going to turn this back over to Jeff. This is this gets into the other stuff. So Jeff, you want to take over? All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Very cool. So let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and take over the monitor right here. It's a good time to kind of go in, and you should see my screen. I actually started a scan. I wanted to kind of show you how all this kind of stuff fit together. The thing I like about JCPR is the thoroughness of it. And let me go ahead and uh, just show you. Um, let's start right here with my slide here, and we'll just kind of skip a little bit ahead. And I just want to talk a little bit about kind of what's included with this thing. It is incredibly thorough in terms of what it's taking into account. It's taking into account like the uh, support and resistance, the filtered, uh, and I've got a slide for it, but it's kind of towards the end. Let me go here, here, there we go. So the, with the scoring process, the things that um, I, we went through a lot today, we went through kind of how you go in and recognize uh, the pattern, how you combine the patterns and all that kind of stuff. The thing that's really nice about the software is all of this stuff is done very automatically for you. And as part of that scoring process, what's going to happen is you're going to kind of have statistics, you're going to have that candle pattern recognition, um, you're, uh, you're going to have the volume analytics that are done in the technical indicators. And the thing that is really, really cool about this product is it really kind of takes everything down and what it does is it shows you a score. 
In other words, this is the one based on kind of all of these factors that are going to give you the best chance for success or the best results. And let me just show you kind of a little bit about uh, in the product and uh, we have a special offer for you today as well. So here we're running the scan. It's about halfway through. I just barely started it to be frank. So let me go ahead and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel because we have some results that we can show you. Obviously we'd let it complete but I want to kind of show you what's going to be in that report. Do see a couple questions popping in. I will come back and, and uh, talk to you about your questions and that kind of stuff. Where did that report go though? Um, maybe it's on another screen. Hold on just a second. Oh, here we go. Okay, so here's the report. It was just on my other monitor. And what you've got is you've got a list of all those stocks. We went through about 2,000 uh, before I canceled the scan. And whether or not they have a buy signal or a sell signal based on a candle pattern today. Okay, and if I want to, what I can do is I can actually rank these based and I can just see what the bank, the buy signals are. Over here you've got the score column. So this is basically taking into account the uh, huge amount of statistical work that Greg did. It's taking into account where it's happening in regard to support and resistance, the technical indicators, um, it, uh, all of those kind of factors that Greg talked about, and it's just giving you a likelihood for success. It can go from zero to 100. So obviously the closer you get to 100, the better it's going to be. And I can also sort on this uh, sort on this score column. So if I sort all of them, we'll see that Correct Copper America had about 94. Now, if you're familiar with Metastock, uh, once you've got this scan run, it's pretty easy to save the list. And I'm gonna, just going to do that just in case I don't see something I like. So I'm going to go ahead and save this list. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a name for this list. This is JCPR Scan Results. And it happens to be through, uh, March 5th here. So I'll go ahead and put a date in here so I can remember when I scan for. And I'm just going to dump all of those into a list. And now I've got now that I've got this list, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. That's going to save it. I'm going to go back in here and go to my uh, Power Console, and we'll just go ahead and look at some charts. So you'll find that list right here under Custom Online Lists. I actually just barely got a brand new computer, so it's my very first list that I've saved as a custom list. And I'm going to go ahead and open up just the first one. So uh, there's about maybe 30 or 40 on here, maybe a few more. But I can open up the first one. And what I can do is I can actually apply th one of the JCPR templates to it. So if I come down here uh, to JCPR, what I'm going to see is I'm going to say a clean chart or one with the filtering indicators. And then this one that isn't actually included, it's just one that I've made, which you can do too. I'm going to do it with the, uh, the clean chart just for the purpose of showing you what it does. I'll go ahead and click on the open button here. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up that first stock in the list and we can then see exactly what all the patterns are. And you'll notice that they're all being drawn on this particular chart. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You'll notice we've got automatically on here the support and resistance indicators that are in there. And what we had to just is a, a bullish engulfing. Uh, and you'll notice a couple days ago we had another bull bullish engulfing. And a few days before that we had another bullish engulfing. I actually kind of like this pattern. But to see kind of the breakdown of the score, what I want to do is I'll go into the commentary. And that's going to give us a little bit of a breakdown on that score. So to do that, if you're new to Metastock, I know a lot of you don't have Metastock right now, what you're going to do is just go to the view here, and you'll click on view expert commentary. And here it's going to break down that score for you. So here we've got um, the total score on this particular thing was, where's the total score? 53. So not terribly great, about half and half uh, out of the out of the chance of success. But you can see where that score comes from. So you've got the support and resistance score, it's 25 out of 25 and you have support through the pattern body. The filtered uh, technical analysis came in at 10 out of 40. The volume came out as 10 out of uh, 15. The statistics were 3 out of a possible 15. And then the breakdown of that was, uh, the pattern breakdown was actually five out of five, which gives you your total pattern for success. Now there's quite a few different things that we recognize in this um, expert advisor. Uh, if we scroll back, you'll see three, 
three IUs, you'll see this three OD. There's quite a few different candle patterns that are recognized. I should have counted them up, but I didn't. But one of the things that we wanted to be able to do for you when we created the product was actually provide you detailed information about all of the patterns. So you'll see this uh, engulfing bullish has a commentary file right here that we can click into. So if you're not familiar with like an engulfing bullish, for example, you can double click on this. Just choose the open, open it with your uh, default browser. And it's going to open this up and it's going to tell you what that engulfing pattern is. It's going to tell you how pet flexible the pattern is. And each of the patterns that we've got built into the software not only do they provide that scoring functionality with you to kind of tell you how powerful they are in that particular day, how the statistics match up, but they also give you a really, really good detailed explanation of how they work out. So, so it's pretty cool. Um, if we wanted to kind of take a look, since we've opened this up from a list, here's a copy of that list right here. I'm just going to set my option to use this chart as a template. Because again, this is brand new computer for me. I don't have this option saved. Want to do that? But now I can go in and look at just the stocks that have the opportunity. So this one had an engulfing bullish. Maybe we like it. Maybe we don't. Maybe we want to take a look at some other stocks. Now I can just click on this next chart, uh, and it'll take me to the next one that has an opportunity. And very, very quickly, instead of going through three or four thousand charts or whatever, I can identify just the stocks that actually, uh, just the ones that have the patterns, the scoring, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, that's going to be how it works. Now, I actually did something a little bit incorrectly there. So let me go back JCP, to the clean template. I'll apply that to the chart. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set that option again to use the chart as a template. But what I need to do is I actually need to chart, change charts at least once to get that option to save. So we'll go to a set of the next chart on the list, and that should be saved for you. And again, here you've got your in, another engulfing bullish pattern. You've got your support and resistance. You've got your score. All that stuff is going to be automatically fed into there for you. So uh, great little product. The reason I do, I actually did change to a five-minute chart for some reason. I'm going to change that back to daily. But uh, that's, that's really in a nutshell how it works. This one has a 64% chance of success. And again, it's just a matter of going click, click, click to kind of find the ones that kind of have the highest probability of success for you and the ones that you generally tend to like the best. It's, it's, it, basically with this product, one of the reasons I like it is we take literally all of this information, all the statistics, all the work that uh, Greg has done on candlesticks, and we kind of package it up into a really neat scoring process that is going to allow you to kind of really kind of cut through a lot of the crap and really focus on the opportunities. It's a great little product. Okay. Uh, normally, this product is cheap. It's like 399 bucks. I think it's like a couple hundred bucks too cheap. Uh, for all of the stuff that feeds into it, but we are doing a webinar special today. That is, uh, it's going to be 299 if you uh, if you buy it. That price does include our 30-day money-back guarantee, like all of our products do. I know a lot of you said you aren't using Metastock yet. This will actually include a free trial of Metastock. Um, if you have questions, I know there's questions. I'm going to come back to them. But if you have questions or if you'd like to do this, this web this offer is kind of good enough that I don't actually have a web page put together for it. So you're going to need to call in to place your order, and you can do that at 800-882-3040. Let me kind of take a look at some of the questions that were coming in. Give me just a second to kind of open up that screen. And, oh, let me share my screen again. Okay, make sure the right one is sharing questions. A lot of questions coming in. We'll take a few minutes. Uh, Dave asked a question, why are there no support lines under the last green bar? Um, well, the, the simple answer is it didn't recognize a support level there uh, based on kind of the algorithms that we use for the support. Um, anytime you open it up, it's going to show the last areas that it shows us as a support and resistance. Um, Dennis said, in the expert, if you have an engulfing pattern and the filter is at minus 40, is it valid? 
or when you're looking at the bullish reversal, only if your filtering is at plus 40 do you take the trade. Do you don't take the trade? I think that kind of goes back to the rules. Greg, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Would you take a trade that was, had a less than a, a, a plus 40? Well, it depends what everything else was doing. Uh, sure. Uh, what this is with all these statistics, it just is showing you the ideal situation. And when you're trading, you don't always have ideal situations. Uh, I would say that if all, if if this was a all the statistics added up into the 80% or better, uh, you could you could take the trade with looser stops. If the statistics were less than that, you'd want tighter stops. And I will say this: after trading for 45 years, don't ever trade without stops. There you go. Let me I add another thing that. I forgot to mention. <laughs> Let me add another. Um, I've been using Metastock since version one, back in 1983, um, and it's I've, I'm on my third generation of Metastock guys, guys and gals. Uh, Steve Akalis was the original founder. He and I were actually competitors, and then we became good friends. And then there was another generation of Metastock people. They're all great people to work with, believe me. And this is a fantastic desktop product. And that actually goes to a question that was being asked for by a couple of people. Prasad and Larry said, I don't use Metastock. <laughs> Does this work for other platforms? Well, I would encourage you to try Metastock. Uh, to give you some statistics on Metastock, for the last 22 years in a row, it's been rated number one uh, in terms of software um, by the readers, uh, not the editors, but the readers of Stocks and Commodities. Every year it wins. It's going to win again this year, and I think I can say that in public. Hopefully I can. Uh, I think it's been announced so uh, officially, but for the last 22, 23 years in a row, it's been rated number one. Um, and really kind of a lot of people get it because of the decision support. But when we designed this, we designed it to work with Metastock. And um, it's only available in Metastock, not in any other platforms. You can get a, a trial of Metastock. After your 30-day trial, Metastock is really cheap, uh, particularly some of the, the DC versions, like 60 bucks a month. So um, it's worth trying, especially because your risk-reward is very, very low. Um, a lot of our customers are very, very successful, and we think it's because they use our software, but try it out. It's a great software package. Uh, in a nutshell, it does scanning, which we were showing you. It does uh, testing of trading ideas. And it does great charting and analytics. We have a patent-pending forecaster in there. Uh, I could go on and on, but there's just so many great functionalities. And the bottom line is if, it, if you do try it, and you decide it's not useful for you, what's your risk there? Some of your time. You do get a money-back guarantee on the, the thing, and we are going to give you a free trial of Metastock to go with it. So give us a call. We can go through kind of the pricing of Metastock after your trial with you and kind of explain that in a little bit more detail. It starts at about 59 bucks a month. Very, very inexpensive, especially if it's a tool that helps you make money. And if it's not, it's not worth buying anyway. Uh, but there is a reason that's been rated so highly for so many years. 800-882-3040 to order. Uh, Gerald and, uh, and Vince both ask a uh, question that's pretty good. Uh, will this work on intraday trading? And uh, to be frank, I have a lot of experience on JCPR on daily charts. A lot of the statistical analysis that uh, Greg has done has been on daily charts. All of the statistics, I think and believe, in fact, have been done on daily charts. Um, we do have some customers. That you can apply it to intraday charts. Um, and I'd encourage you to do this regardless of whether or not you don't. If you want to play with it on intraday charts, do. That's why we offer you the money back guarantee. Um, make sure you're comfortable with it. And even if you buy it to use it with daily charts and you want to kind of play with it on daily charts, you know what you want to do is you want to kind of look at a lot of charts. You want to do a lot of pretend trades. And then you want to scale in slowly. You know, always when I'm starting to take a, a new thing and implement it into my trading, what I'll do is I'll by one contract uh, or one optionable contract and kind of see how that shakes out for me and just make sure I'm really, really comfortable and understand what those drawdowns are going to look like and, you know, those kind of things. It's just sound advice for when you're kind of implementing anything new in your trading, I think. 
Lots of questions coming in. Uh, Sid says, I have very little knowledge on trading and very little about candle pattern usage. How can I use the product to help me on both long-term and shorter-term <laughs> investments? Well, I think that's kind of the beauty of the product because it is going to actually come in here. And it's going to help. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to say that it's going to skip your education process and you should stop learning. <laughs> because I think the more you know about the market and the more you use Metastock and the more you know about Metastock, I think the better your trading is going to become. But as somebody that's new in the market that can automatically pull in 7 million days of statistics or 7 million uh, records of statistics on a pattern, look at the recognition, have the volume indicators and the technical analysis done for you, and kind of package that up into a neat little score that's very easy to understand, I think it's really, really good. So give it a shot. Peter says, uh, if I buy, I live in Germany, is it a download or a CD only? I believe it's CD only. I could be wrong, uh, but give us a call. If you're in Germany, you can't call in really with that phone number, with that 800 phone number. Um, uh, I'll have Steve. Steve's here checking. Uh, I'll have him check to see if there's a download version. But for those of you that are internationally, let me just type in this uh, address for you. On this page, you will see a chat live with Cells, and you'll be able to chat in with Steve, who's working today, and uh, he'll be able to kind of give you a yes, no on that particular answer. The data cost it starts, again, at $59 a month, very, very inexpensive, um, especially if it helps you make money and not worth it at all if it, if it doesn't help you make money. So give it a try, Jim. Thanks for the question. Um, Gerald says, is there a recording that's going to be available? Absolutely. We'll have the recording. I, um, uh, hopefully we won't have any technical issues. It looks like uh, so far so good. The recording will be available on Monday. Um, Sid says, is there a certain web software or do I need to use a certain Windows OS for using the software? Great question. Windows, it's a Windows product. It's not a web-based app or anything like that. It's a very full-functional web uh, Windows product. And it will work with all of the latest versions of Windows, Windows 9, Windows 10, Windows 7. Um, um, for specific questions beyond that, um, give Steve a call. He'll, he'll answer it for you. Okay, well that's that's uh, what I had to say. Uh, um, if you do have more specific questions, uh, let us know. And Greg, I want to thank you for your time today. Thanks for joining us always for this a, Saturday morning session. Always a pleasure, Jeff. Um, My pleasure. Henry says, uh, uh, hi from Sweden. I use Metastock from 2009. I recommend to all. Henry, I've known you for a long time now. I really appreciate your saying that. Thanks. Um, thanks for coming, guys. Hey, I, Jeff. Yes. Let me get, I, like I said, I've been using Metastock for 35 years. Uh, if if you look at other software, desktop software packages, many times the programming language to create your own indicators is is a, a very difficult. Pascal or some type of programming like Metastock's programming language is is somewhat like algebra. It's very straightforward and very easy to learn and that, that was one of the benefits for most people is that they could build a lot of their own indicators in in the formula builder. Uh, plus there's literally zillions of Metastock indicator code floating around on the internet. Um, anyway, I just, I just, I just want to say that because it's an easy program to use and I also designed a trend following model and managed over six billion dollars uh, with Metastock for many, many years. That's the end of my sales pitch. All right. It's the end of mine, too. So I'm going to say have a good weekend, everybody. I really appreciate your coming in. Uh, looks like we'll probably be doing some more Saturday sessions uh, because the attendance was so great today. Thanks for coming in, everybody. If Saturday is a good day for you, drop me a message and let me know. Oh, and if you want to get a hold of me, my email address is going to come into the, pa uh, into the chat right now. Um, have a good weekend. I'm going to go play with my kids. <laughs> Talk to you later.